and it was modest. I said that there seems to be harmony in nature. How do you feel about that? He says, yes, the universe is lawful, but harmony, I don't know what you mean by that. I said, well, when a rat eats insects, it may be supporting the rat system. But what about the insect system? What he did is he used some water from a backyard, swamp water, and he put it under a microscope and he said, look, everything is fighting everything else. He said, in the human body, everything is fighting everything else. In the ocean, big fish eat little fish. I, I didn't really have enough time to sit there with Einstein and go through all kinds of things because he didn't seem to be in that area. He did, are you interested in mathematics? Mathematics. You're interested. What Boolean geometry means to you? you know, I didn't want to get off into that because to me that would be a sidetrack. Mathematics is a tool, just like sociology and anthropology. These are all instruments to go into making up the future. When the stock market crashed in 1929, Jacques was only 13 years old. Coming of age during the Great Depression prompted many questions for the curious and inquisitive young man. Living in New York City, he found the squalor and suffering around him difficult to understand. The confusion, contradictions, and struggles he saw left a significant impact on his character. Things were so bad, and I had no way of looking at it. And I, I thought the rules of the game were somehow screwed up. I went to many different meetings, communist meetings, socialist meetings, fascist meetings, mankind united, technocracy, to see what the world was teaching, including Eastern philosophy. And I wanted to know what people thought, what they wanted, why they gelled on, on one system. And that each time a society arrived at a system, they tend to keep that system. They didn't even try to go beyond that. But in technology, whenever we made anything, we try to surpass it. The history of civilization for me then was the history of change, social change, human arrangements, homes, boats, planes, trains, all of them were in a process of social evolution, including our language, our outlook, our values, our behavior. As the Depression wore on, Jacques left New York and started hitchhiking around the country. In his travels, he met many interesting and different people, most of whom were, like himself, searching for a way of life that was fair and equitable. Eventually, he ended up traveling to the warm waters and primitive islands of Tahiti. I wanted to go to the South Seas because I like the idea of the natives sharing things. I've read about that. Now, the chief, if he had six wives, and you were strange, he said, here's my best wife. Maybe she will please you. They, they felt their wives gave them so much joy, perhaps they'd give a visitor some joy. You know, their thinking about it was different, and that upset, it caused me to ponder, hey, uh, gee, uh, that's not the way I saw things. Was that the way I saw things? Was that the way I was indoctrinated? That's when I began to ask those questions. So how do you know that anything you like makes sense, Doc? What about your own values? Think about them. Maybe they are senseless. Concerned that Tahiti would be invaded, Jacques returned to the U.S. and joined the Army Air Corps. When the war was over, thousands of factories stood idle their manufacturing capacity no longer needed for wartime production. Capitalizing on the tremendous capacity available for aluminum fabrication, Jacques designed and built a house made entirely from aluminum extrusions. The result was an innovative and extremely efficient use of time and materials. The windows, for example, were put in and then extrusions snapped in and sit with a seal. And so it was very rapid. It took something like 12 minutes put all the windows in. Eight hours to put up the building. 1948, it was unveiled at Warner Brothers, and there were lines all around the studio. Thousands of people come to see it, and airplanes, smoke ridden in through the sky, visit the Trend Home at Warner Brothers Studios. It was publicized in newspapers. 
I think the architectural record as a, one of the first mass-produced type homes. Jacques appreciated the challenges of innovative problem solving. As he honed his skills, he became a competent inventor. He always had a research lab and was constantly inventing new products. While much of his time was spent pursuing his own interests, he was also hired by entrepreneurs to design and fabricate specific inventions, working in a very broad array of technologies. He invented everything from medical and dental devices to 3D motion picture projection systems. A guy named Jack Morse was a film producer at the time. I met him at Warner Brothers Studios. He came to see the trend home. And he was awed by everything fitting together so sensibly. And he said, how do you guys think of these things? You know. So I began to describe how I thought about things. Then he found me interesting. And he said, hey, uh, come on out to the house. And he had a big estate, you know. And he said, uh, can you, do you think you can make a movie projector that projects 3D images without glasses? So I said, yes. He said, how do you know you can do it? You've never done it. I said, that's right. But if it's a physical phenomenon, I think I can work it out. How are you going to do it? I said, I don't know yet. And what I did is uh, I had many different applications, which I'd rather not describe in detail, but I got 3D imaging different ways. And the simplest way was uh, projecting the right and left eye image from behind the screen at the right eye and left eye. Now then, if you moved off to the side, you lost your image. And so uh, Jack wanted Technicolor to go the rest of the way. So he got them to come out and look at it. And they said, how do you do that? It's very interesting. I said, I'm, we're not at liberty to disclose that unless you back the next stage. So they said, well, how do you maintain visual isolation? I said, I still can't discuss that with you. So they looked at it, it was super clear, no lines. They said, well, that's the best I've seen up to now, but it fades to 30 degrees. I said, yes, it does. And at a distance, it fades, too, as you move back. So they said, well, can you do anything about that? I said, yes. That's why you're here, to take it to the next stage. So they said, look, Jack, you get rid of the fade, and you get rid of the distance problem, then call us. So uh, that died, like the trend home died. Then I read in the books on invention how Alexander Graham Bell had to make a telephone before they backed it. The Xerox machine had to be made completely. Edison had to make the electric lamp. Nobody backed him on the way up until after he was known. What are these for? What were these all about? These are... Oh, gee. Uh, these are various... Well, these are surgical instruments, yes, aren't they? Yes, various types. Those are only some of them. You know what a retractor is? No. It holds the skin open while you're operating? These are various types of retractors. Uh, the purpose of that was to rotate the, the bone so it's in line before you put the prosthesis in. It rotates uh, uh, the femur, the upper region of the femur. Those are tweezers with holes in them. If you look at the holes in the front of the tweet, to put the sutures through, to guide you through the muscle. So you put it over the muscle, and the holes are right through the middle of the muscle. You didn't have to eyeball it. So these are things that you designed... A long time ago. ...under contract. Oh, You're yeah. contracted to yeah, design these yeah. things. I did thousands of different things. But this doctor took the patents out in his name. But that's all right. I didn't, as long as it was out there. I didn't know what I wanted to be. You know, since I looked at all things and tried to change all things, wheelchairs, everything, make them better, you know, I found it easy to invent. But then inventions cost money, and I didn't have money for patents. So I used to make thousands of different inventions and just file them away because I had no money. I used to spend my savings, whatever I earned, on what equipment that I needed and if I was working on an artificial leg and I, I was $200 behind, I would take my last 200